Today we're gonna to build a super rugged external SSD drive, super fast for your Mac computer. Let me show you how. All right, welcome back to the channel. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna build a high quality, super rugged external SSD drive for your Mac computer. I bought this 24 inch iMac, it only has 256 gigs of RAM. I like to take drives like this, these external drives that are gonna be fast enough, plug them in and then I move my library of iMovie or move Final Cut Pro library over to them and I you know, basically edit off this. So I'm gonna build this. Now why is it rugged? Both in the sense that you can drive a car over this thing, I'm gonna show you. I'm not going to, but you can step on it for sure. Um, it's super heavy, super, you know, just rugged. And then I'm also gonna be pairing it with a great Intel drive. It's gonna be a full M.2 drive, PCIe drive, which we'll get into in a second. And that's an awesome drive. I, I work at a data center. These drives work incredibly well at data centers. Intel drives are one of our top performing drives, all different types of Intel. You spend a little bit more, but they're worth it. So now why would anyone wanna do this project? And there's four main reasons. So number one is gonna be if you like to tinker, number one, but that's not the real reason. Number two is you can actually pick quality components and I'm gonna show you these components. I'm gonna have links to them in my description of the video so you guys can go out and buy these. But these are quality. One's from Quizlab, that's the external case and the, and the drive's gonna be Intel. So that's the other reason you can buy quality components like this Intel drive and make sure you have quality components in the external drive. Um, and let me just see what my other things are here. You can actually uh, take this out if you needed to as well. So let's say this actually failed, hopefully it never does. You can take out the drive and put a new one in, or if it fills up, you can take it out and put a new one in as well. So you have that kind of capability on these. And when you buy them store-bought like a Samsung T5 or something, you know, if it breaks, it breaks, or you can't really replace that drive easily. Here you can, so that's number, you know, that's number three. And then really, I'm gonna format this to work on both Mac and PC by formatting an XFAT, so we'll show you how to do that. So without further ado, let's get into this, and I'll start with this little enclosure, number one. All right, we're gonna start with the enclosure. This is the Quizlab Rugged SSD enclosure. It's IP66 dust and water resistant, which means you can sprinkle water on it, full dust resistant, but it's made like a tank. Um, it's an NVMe, it takes NVMe drives, it takes it, PCIe M.2 drives, so you can put those and pair those with this. Um, let me see here, it's 39 bucks on Amazon, 39.99, so it's a little bit more, but it's totally worth it with the construction of this thing. It is super rugged. Um, and I'll have a link to that in the description. It does get a 4.9 out of five as far as the reviews as well, so people like this thing. Um, it's about 4.8 by 1.82 by 0.63 inches. And uh, it says it works on a PC on the website, but it works on a Mac just fine. So I do have this Mac here. Again, it's a 24 inch Mac, and I like to do all my videos uh, off of this thing. So I only have a 256 gig drive. I got the base model over here. So I use these things, I, I build these out, and I plug them in, and I have to make sure they're fast enough, but I drag my libraries of editing into there, like iMovie or Final Cut Pro, and I edit right off these things. And that's what I'm gonna build this for. So it should be fast enough for that. Um, this is drop test also, military standard uh, 810G 516.6. So again, I said super rugged. Thunderbolt 3 compatible as well, although 10 gigabits per second only. And just got the rugged construction. It's got this orange bumper on it. It's got, you know, kind of seals on the end you can see here. I'll show you up close. And it's overall just a rugged, super nice, high quality when you feel in the hand enclosure. Um, now, really quickly, when you take this thing apart, the way you install the drive in here is you have to take six screws out of the bottom really quickly. You basically seed the SSD, which we'll get into in a second, which one I'm using. You seed it in there, you screw one screw back in. Then you put the, they gave you a really thick thermal pad. Now this thing gets a little warm, but it does not get super hot, so that's nice. And then you put the six screws back in after the therm thermal pad's done, and you can close it back up, and it's ready to go, but you do have to format this on the Mac, which we'll get into. So um, the cool thing about this thing, too, is it's got a carabiner on it, and I'll show you some close-ups. But the actual cable, which is a pro and a con, kind of just clips in like this. And you can see it here, but it looks like a handle, except you don't want to hang it off that because it could fall off. But it basically comes off and you can use that in your bag and you can just take that off and use that as the actual, this is the 10 gigabit per second USB-C cable that comes with it. The problem with this cable is it's too short. It's about five inches. So I did pair it with another one I'll get into at the end of the video, which is, works really well with this. And I'll prove, you, you know, I'll prove it in speed tests. So we're gonna do some speed tests on this as well. So stay tuned for all the speed tests and how fast this is. 
Um, so anyways, that's that. And you just basically plug it in um, and we'll get into that in a second. So the drive I'm pairing it with here is the Intel. This is gonna be the Intel 670P series. These are on sale now for, geez, they're getting cheaper. I think they're like $79.99. The actual 660p, which is a, the older version of this, is actually 84 bucks. So make sure you get the 670p. And again, this is going to be a, a size 2280 NVMe drive, um, PCIe, one terabyte. So you get one terabyte for 79 bucks now. So really super fast drive. And like I said, I use these in data centers, and they work incredibly fast. Um, I never have problems on any of our servers or anything when we use Intel drives. So they're very, re you know, just resilient. This is a QLC drive as well. Um, so basically what that means is your read and writes as far as the longevity of it may not be as long as some other types of drives. But realistically, this one gives you 370 terabytes before you have to worry about any failures, which means you'd have to put 100 gigabytes on this every day for over 10 years before it would fail. So it's going to be enough for most people um, unless you're going crazy with it. So uh, beyond that, I think, let's see what else it says. I mean, just it says if you throw this into a directly into computer, which we're not going to do, it's got 3,500 megabyte per second reads, 2,500 megabyte per second writes, up to 330,000 operations per second uh, on the writes. So, long story short, this thing is super fast, um, but we're not going to be doing that. We're only going to a 10 gig connection, so it's not going to be that fast in an external drive, but it will be fast enough, and I'm going to do some speed tests here in a second. So, once you go ahead and do this, get this ready, have the drive in here. You wanna pop this into your Mac. Once you pop this into your Mac computer, it's gonna come up and say, uh, go to disk utility. Make sure you select this drive and not your main drive or you'll erase everything. Disclaimer, I'm not responsible for you, so know what you're doing. But you find this drive that comes up, it's gonna be under the externals, and you select it, you click erase on it, and when you erase it, I formatted this. I only changed the formatting to XFAT because I want this to work on a PC and a Mac. But if you want this just to work on a Mac, you want to do APFS, just the APFS one with nothing behind it. And then I also changed the name of this to the one terabyte drive so that, uh, what did I do, Intel one terabyte, so I know what this is named. So you want to make sure you change the name of it so you know what drive it is. Make sure you do not erase your main drive, though. Make sure you, when you plug this in, you see it show up, and this is the drive you're going to be erasing. When you're done, though, I used, again, I used XFAT, so let's do a couple speed tests here. All right, so the very first test, I used this cable that it came with here, and this is a 10 gigabit per second USB-C cable. So I used that, and I used Blackmagic for the test. You'll see it right here. And it looks like I got 781.1 megabytes per second on the writes and 841.5 on the reads. So pretty fast. I mean, this is pretty fast. Again, you're, you're, you're limited to 10 gigabits per second divided by eight. So we're pretty close to the limit of what we can do here. If you plug this into your computer, it's going to be way faster. But we're doing an external drive here. All right, and then what I did is I actually tried the test again. I paired it with this other cable I bought. I'll have a link to this as well. This is the N-E-K-T-E-C-K cable. It's a Thunderbolt 3 cable. And I just removed this cable that it came with, and I used this cable over here, and I'll have a link to it again in the description. I wanted to get more length. So that's three and a half feet, this one over here. This one's only five inches, the cable. So I used it. I wanted to make sure it benchmarked the same. So Basically on the writes, I got 784.7 on the writes, which is a couple megabytes per second faster. And then I got exactly basically the same reads, 841 megabytes per second with this new cable. So it's, it's essentially the exact same thing. So the cables didn't matter. So this is a good cable to use if you want more length. And I'll have a link again to that. So overall, what it is, is that this is, you know, the capability of a 10 gigabit per second cable, you know, in this device, that's as, as fast as this device is, is going to get you around that eight or 900 megabytes per second. When you take, when you take 10 gigabits divided by eight, you get somewhere in that range. Um, with overhead and stuff, you're going to be, if you can get anywhere close to 900, it's very fast on an external drive like this. So it does meet my needs. I can do editing on this. This is capable of doing 4K editing if you move your library to it. So overall, it's just a great enclosure um, paired with the Intel and paired with the Quizlab. Uh, external SSD drive. So to wrap up this video, so why would people do this again? Well, you get to pick your components, and I like to pick quality, super rugged external stuff like this, not just plastic junk. So this is a great enclosure, but then I pair it with one of the best drives in the industry. Like I said, we use these in our data center, Intel drives. They can, each, they can actually replace Dell drives and do just as well with them. Um, never have a problem with them, and they're right now they're about the same price as the other ones, 79 bucks. But usually they're a few bucks more, but it's totally worth it um, to go with Intel. 
Uh, but I also like t tinkering with things and I like changing things out for my testing and stuff. You know, I can take that drive out, store it somewhere, put it back in later, use another drive in this enclosure. Um, but also when I go editing and I go to the store and stuff, if I go to the coffee shop, this thing is not going to break in my bag. Um, it can get dust on it. It's not going to make a big difference. I mean, you can step on this thing. I'm telling you, it's, it's, it weighs a ton. You just don't want to drop this on the floor because it's probably going to put a hole in the floor. So it's very heavy. Um, beyond that, this is all I wanted to kind of share. These are the kind of projects I like doing. And if you want to build your own external storage for a Mac, this is a great solution. So let me know what you think if you guys you know, test this out. Um, military standard, you know, drop test on this thing. Great SSD drive, super fast. Again, if you even want this SSD just for your computer, you're going to get that 25 or 3,500 megabytes per second versus the you know, 850 on the external device here. So it's a very, very fast drive as well if you do it you know, directly into your computer. But this wasn't, wasn't what the video was about here, and I wanted to show people what are the options for you if you don't go that route. So at the end of the day, that's it. Oh, yeah, and the last thing is, is here's the cable. I forgot to show you to you. The other cable that I mentioned here, uh, the cable is about you know, three and a half feet, so you can see it here. All right, that's it. So I hope people like these videos. These are kind of the videos I like to make is just kind of off the cuff stuff where these type of projects kind of develop from it. And uh, if you're interested in building your own external drive, I've tested this out, it works really well. And I have all the stuff in the description if you're interested in checking it out yourself. Again, it's gonna cost you a little over 100 bucks or so, um, you know, comparable with some of the other ones out there, but you're gonna get a much better solution that you can interchange stuff with. So we'll talk to everybody soon in the end. Hope you guys like these videos. Peace.